Hey guys, it's Pat from Aeroflow Performance, and I wanted to put this video out here. It's a bit of a PSA. You've got to stop over-tensioning your Gilmer belts. So if you're running a Gilmer drive on your engine, so it's a Windsor or a Chevy or a Holden motor, whatever it is, we know everyone likes the Gilmer because it has that sort of whine, and that comes from the shape of these teeth that are on the inside of the belt. But it's not there to do that. So the idea of a Gilmer belt is to reduce belt slip at high RPM and high horsepower. So you get rid of the V belt, you put this Gilmer drive on, and you've got these wide ribbed belts, or these wide tooth belt, uh, and that's gonna give a much more stable operation uh, and much more grip at high RPM. So when these pulleys are spinning, you've got that solid engagement between the two. So it's not relying on just the tension like a V belt does, it's actually locked into the gear. Now, because it's a square design on that tooth, if you pull it really tight, when the belt slips over the, over the tooth, it creates a whine noise. And we all know that that's like a blower, and it sounds cool, and you go wah, wah, when you give it a rev and all that sort of thing. Everyone goes, oh, is that blown, mate? But no, it's just got a Gilmer belt that's over-tensioned. Why is over-tensioning a Gilmer belt a problem? So basically, you're gonna find your alternator is the part that's creating the tension, or that's the adjustable part on most of these applications, right? So there's a, a bolt that it mounts on, on the side of the motor or the bracket, and then there's another bracket that comes down here, you loosen this bolt and then you slide it in and out to change the position. And the belt goes over the top there and it's slack and you pull the alternator out and it gets tighter, and you pull it in, it gets slack. When you pull it tight, not only does that pull the belt tight, but it also creates a lot of side load on the alternator bearing. It creates a lot of side load on your crank upper shell, the bearings there, and your water pump bearings. Because these belts are quite tough, they're quite strong, and there's only a certain amount that they flex, like barely at all, you can't get any flex out of this. So when you tighten and tighten and you're yanking on it or you're putting a lever bar or, you know, or something on there to pull that real tight so it screams its head off, all you're doing is wearing out your belt, you're wearing out the alternator bearings, the water pump bearings, and in some cases, even, you know, you're overstressing the bearings on your crank. So what you need to do when you get this all set up on your, on your car, effectively, you're gonna put that on there. And I don't have a full engine set up here available at the moment, but we'll just give you an idea. So you wanna get this on here, pull the alternator to the tension where you can take the belt and still turn it 90 degrees. So this is the same sort of concept as a timing belt. When you're tensioning a timing belt, you wanna be able to take that belt in between, say, the water pump and the alternator pulley and turn it 90. If you can't turn it 90, the belt's too tight and you need to back it off. So that's the most important thing that I can tell you. Put the Gilmer drive on there so you don't get any belt slip. We know old V belts and all that sort of thing are no good at high RPM or if you're getting on and off the throttle. Just need to make sure that this Gilmer is tensioned correctly with that sort of flexibility in it, as you can see there. And then the other thing to remember as well, if you've got wear on your belt that's on the leading edge or the trailing edge, or the inside or the outside of the belt, generally what's that, what that's from is the alternator, the bracketry, isn't actually square and in line with the rest of the pulleys. So it's really important to be able to run basically a straight edge down the line of these pulleys and make sure that they're in line and the alternator doesn't have any twist or flex on it. Sometimes you, get, you might get the right tension on the belt, but the original alternator bracket that you're using could be really, really old, it could be a bit weak. So when you're at high RPM, you get the belt, or you get the bracket talking up and that's gonna move the belt around on the pulley and it's gonna run on one edge and that's gonna wear it out quicker as well. So really, really important guys, I know it's just a quick video, probably a little bit longer than we wanted it to be, but it's really important that you get the tension right, so just don't forget 90 degrees on the belt, and that's gonna make it last a lot longer. And please, if you're gonna buy one of these belts, do yourself a favor and get two. You're not gonna find one of these Gilmer belts out the back of nowhere. If you're cruising with your mates, you spit a belt, it does happen, they do wear, it's a serviceable item. Um, just get two, do yourself a favor, put one in the glove box, make sure you've got it. Because if you have over-tensioned it, or you've been out doing skids all day at power cruise and it's after five o'clock and 
no one's open, you need one of these belts. So keep that in mind. Don't over-tension your Gilmer belt. It's not a blower, it's a Gilmer belt. Thanks guys, we'll see you on the next one.